Good evening, Conroe ISD family. I'm Curtis Nall, superintendent of Conroe ISD. Thank you for joining us tonight. This is our COVID-19 update number three here in the school district. Um, today's date's March 25th. This is the six o'clock p.m. update. Thank you once again for joining us. Uh, we appreciate you taking time out of your day to check in with the school district and we're happy to share information with you. I, I wanna start today by just saying a big thank you to our communications team. Uh, there are not many of them here. There are only three members of our team here today, but they are what uh, they are the team that makes this happen. They allow us to communicate so well with you and, and get the emails to you, get these videos out. So a uh, special thank you to our communications team. We do appreciate it. Now, tonight's video, um, we're going to just give some updates on many items, kind of a laundry list, and I made some notes here so that I wouldn't forget tonight. Um, we'll talk quite a bit about technology because I know that you are now uh, knee-deep in your online education and your remote learning, so we want to talk about some of those issues. And then our big feature tonight, we'll be talking to Mr. Greg Colshan. He is our Assistant Superintendent for Secondary Education. Uh, that means he directly oversees all of our high school campuses. Uh, we were fortunate to have Mr. Colshan. You know, he spent 20 years as a high school principal, so uh, he understands the needs of high school students, especially seniors. And so we, we want to talk specifically tonight about some of those issues that apply to seniors. Um, we'll share as much information as we know, as you're well aware, things are changing so rapidly. Um, but we'll tell you where we are today so that you can be aware. Uh, let me start by just talking about our community a little bit tonight. Um, if you saw the press release today come out from the Montgomery County Public Health, we now have our 31st positive test in our community. Uh, what does that number mean? It should mean a few things to you. Number one, this is real, all right? Um, and, and we hope that you'll take this, this serious. Our county judge has told us that he does not want to implement stricter um, regulations on us as a community. However, he is counting on us to be smart and follow the rules that are in place. So I, I'm just counting on you, practice your social distancing, stay home as much as you can. Uh, students, parents, as much as they may want to go play down the street with their friends, please don't allow that to happen. Please don't allow them to go to the park and hang out with many kids at a time. That is not what we're trying to achieve here as a community. If we can't handle this ourselves, and I'm afraid that our county judge will be forced to, to do more and we'll have more restrictions and they could last longer. But if we all work together, we can get through this much quicker. So I just implore you, please stay home as much as you can. Please practice social distancing, stay six feet away. Uh, if you do have to go to the grocery store and do those things. The other thing I, I want to tell you about that number is don't let it scare you though. Uh, you need to take it serious because it is serious. But don't be shocked that that number has increased so quickly over the last few days. They've told us over and over again, as we tested more people, those numbers would rise. So I, I want you to take it serious, but I want you to be alarmed um, to think that it's different today than it was three or four days ago, or than it was two weeks ago when we made the decision to cancel school. This is exactly what we anticipated would happen when we made that decision a few weeks ago. So um, the situation is not deteriorating quickly, it's exactly where we thought it would be. We just need to take it serious. So I'm just counting on you as a community. I think we can do this. Um, our county judge has shown a whole lot of faith in us um, as a citizenry to uh, follow those rules. And so uh, I encourage you to do so. Now let's talk about uh, that online education. Parents, you're doing great. Uh, there's a lot going on. We know that we are sending a lot of information out this week. Thank you to our teachers, administrators, everyone that's working so hard on campuses to make all those resources available to you. Hopefully you've had a chance to get started on that. We've seen great pictures. If you want to update us with the pictures of what's going on in your house, we encourage you to do that. You can send us a message through Facebook and we have great photo albums there and we love seeing that. It's really heartwarming to see what's going on in your homes. Uh, keep doing the best you can, parents, but, but know that that's all we're asking of you. Uh, we've had some situations where parents have called and said, you know, I'm getting too much. I've got four kids and it's too much. And we understand that. Uh, we're we are working to try to back down a little bit or to consolidate some of our communications. But what I would encourage you to do is just communicate with your campus. Uh, if you are overwhelmed, if you're getting too much, if your child is overwhelmed, if you can communicate to your the teacher, the counselor, the principal on your campus, I know they can handle it. We, we've had a few of these little bumps along the way, folks that have contacted us, and, and we knew that would happen. But what I have yet to see, I've yet to see any situation that we haven't been able to solve. 
So every time that we've had a parent contact me or parents have been able to contact the campus and say, listen, I'm getting too many emails or I don't have school supplies or we're struggling with technology, what are our options? Our campuses have been able to solve every single one of those problems that have come in. So please communicate directly to your campus. They are the ones that can solve those problems for you. And I know that they will. As you're helping your students with the work, um, I know that it can be daunting. So uh, reach out to help. There are a lot of online resources and we can help you instructionally. We'll do that as well uh, as we keep working through this. The big point that I'd like to make here is this is a monumental moment in your child's life, all right? For my generation, um, I, I still remember very clearly when the Challenger exploded. That, that was a monumental moment of my childhood. Uh, I think for um, younger, younger kids today that may be in their 20s, it, it might be 9-11 as a monumental moment. This is going to be a monumental moment in the life of your child. And you're making memories with them every single day. Uh, the lessons that we're going to teach, that content is really important. And I don't want to minimize it because it is important. But 20 or 30 years from now, they will not remember the math lesson that you worked with them on on these days. And they're not going to remember the history lesson, but they will remember the time with you. They're going to remember those moments that you make. So make those moments. I, I will share one with you personally um, from my life. Yesterday, my wife and I went on a walk and our two children rode their bikes with us. Now, my kids are 20 and 17. Okay. It's probably been 10 years since we've had that moment where we walked down the street and my two kids rode bicycles with us. But that was a memory. And, and I'm not sure if they'll remember that, but I, I assure you that 20 years from now, I'm still going to remember that moment from yesterday. Take the opportunities to make those memories with your kids, okay? And, and know that when this is over, that's going to mean the world to them. So we appreciate the fact that you're doing that. Just keep plugging away. We'll help in any way we can. Let's talk about our meal distribution. Um, we, we will continue to do Tuesdays and Thursdays. Our 10 sites are open. We have delivered over 80,000 meals uh, since this situation first began. Big thank you to our child nutrition department. You know, these meals all have to be put together and made, and that's being done by our child nutrition workers. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your service to this school district and the community. It's amazing. We love seeing people come through the lines. A lot of smiling faces. You make our day. Uh, we look forward to serving you again tomorrow. Once again, it's Tuesdays and Thursdays uh, at our 10 locations. One of the new items I want to share with you tonight is a nurse's hotline. Uh, this hotline is, is manned by our CISD nurses. They're all RNs. And they're there to answer any generic and general questions that you may have about this situation. It is not intended to replace 911. It is not intended to replace your doctor's office. If you have specific healthcare concerns about yourself or your children, you need to call your healthcare provider. But if you'd like to just reach out and get more general information, you can do that by calling our nurses hotline. That number is 936-709-7791. And it is manned um, every Monday through Friday from eight to three. You can give that, that line a call. We'll be happy to answer any questions that we have. Let's talk a little bit about technology. Never before have we um, relied on technology like we do today. And I'll, I will tell you, um, I'm a guy that tries to look for bright spots in every situation. One of the bright spots that I see in this situation is we are going to be much better at online education and online instruction for having had this experience than we ever would have been without it. And, and I see us growing every day instructionally in this area. The, the technology, uh, where one time it, it seemed as maybe it was a, an extra thing, today it's a necessity and it has to work when we need it to work. But let me share with you a little bit about what our technology team has been doing and give a few tips. Um, first of all, we have doubled our bandwidth, uh, almost doubled our bandwidth for our internet connection. So we've gone from six gigabytes to 10 gigabytes of, uh, of bandwidth. We also added more redundancy to make sure that we don't have outages through this process. Our single sign-on, which is a new item that we added earlier this year or last summer, uh, which allows our employees and students to, to access all of their applications by signing on one time. Well, 
how lucky are we that we implemented that last year because it's making a world of difference in how we're able to function remotely right now. But we've added more capacity to that. Uh, I know that it can get a little slow when everybody's logging on, but we've added more capacity uh, to help into that system. Uh, some of the services that we use are seeing slowdowns. So when you go through single sign-on and you sign in and you access Canvas, when you're working in single sign-on just to input your information, you're talking to our servers here in Conroe ISD. But once you click to Canvas or Dreambox or Seesaw, whatever program it may be that you're working with, you are no longer talking to Conroe ISD servers. You're now talking directly to that company servers. And, and I share that with you because us and every other school district across the nation are using those same programs. So you may experience slowdowns with Canvas from time to time because so many students across the nation are trying to talk to Canvas on their computer. Um, you may have slowdowns even within your own house. If someone is streaming Netflix two rooms away, it may slow down your, your own internet service in your house. But even if your internet service at your house is perfect, uh, even going to Canvas or like I said, any of those other apps, they can go slower. There's nothing that we can do to speed that up. I would just encourage you to be patient with that. Know that if you're on a Zoom conference, it could knock you off occasionally. That may happen. It may kick you out. If that happens, stay patient with it. Just re-log in and go through the process. Um, just know that the whole world all of a sudden is using all these applications and they're doing the best they can. Um, also just want to remind folks to be careful uh, with their internet security during this time. We've had multiple phishing attacks um, into Conroe ISD, into our emails where, where people send us fraudulent emails to try to steal information from our employees. So if you see any information that doesn't look accurate, please, please be careful. Don't click on any links. Employees want to remind you and, and parents as well. When students are accessing the network, the network or employees are accessing the network and they're not in our building, so you're accessing it remotely, you are not protected by our antivirus software. So if you click on a malicious link and you're not in the Conroe ISD network at the time, we have no protections for your computer. So you need to be really careful. Parents, as always, encourage you just to uh, pay attention to what your students are doing online and make sure that, that everything is uh, up to your standard and they're not communicating with someone outside of Conroe ISD uh, on their computer. Now we know that every student doesn't have a device in Conroe ISD at their home and we are working to try to solve that problem the best we can. We have delivered thousands of devices to our students in the last few days. I was at Oak Ridge High School just yesterday and watched that process go through. We have some Chromebooks that have internet access already built into them. So if you are a family that doesn't have internet access at home, we do have those hotspots and Chromebooks with hotspots built in. Any technology needs that you have, please communicate directly to your campus counselor, uh, and they're working to get as many of those devices out in the public as they can. Um, other things that I would mention about technology, um, Canvas, it's a great tool, we love it. Uh, we have heard that some parents are getting Canvas notifications on your phone, and every time a teacher uploads uh, a new assignment or makes a change to a course, you're getting a notification on your phone. We can't change that on our end. It can only be changed on your end. So you need to go in and change in, in Canvas. You can go into settings and change your notification so that you don't receive all those updates. I, I understand that can be overwhelming right now. So you can make that change on your end. We can't. So please go in and do that. If you're getting more notifications than you can handle, um, please do that. Um, new student registration. That We have students that are, are still moving into Conroe ISD and they want to be a part of the great educational opportunities that are going on on our campuses. So if you are a family that has just moved here and you want to get registered, uh, we have a new registration hotline. You'll need to call this hotline, leave a message, and we will call you back to help you go through this process of online registration. Uh, we, we want to be able to register you and get you into classes while also keeping our staff and your family safe by not having too much personal interaction. So that, um, that phone number is 936-709-7895. So that is the registration hotline. And we'll add that to the comment section um, of this uh, broadcast so you'll have it. But once again, the registration phone line is 936 709 7895. 
Now, we're doing a lot of work to try to bring you information. We'll, we'll continue with these weekly, at least once a week, Facebook Live presentations and try to bring you relevant information. But we're also doing a lot, a lot more exciting things throughout the district that we're going to share. One of those um, is a real life video series that we're working on. What does that mean, real life? Well, these are all those things that for years us adults have fussed about uh, kids not knowing and we wish that somebody would teach them these things. And so we're gonna attempt to do that through videos that can be shared with your kids over these next few weeks. So real life video examples of what we're working on. We're gonna work on a cooking video and we're gonna teach how to uh, maybe boil eggs, scramble eggs, um, make a grilled cheese sandwich, uh, make ice cream. Um, we're looking for a change a tire video, how to change a tire. Also, because it's very appropriate now, just a video on how to properly wash your hands. So if you have great ideas for real life videos, share them with us in the comments section uh, and we'll give those to Andrew who handles our, our video production and um, hopefully we'll see those coming out in the future. I wanna shift gears now and talk about the class of 2020 and our seniors. We have over 4,500 seniors in Conroe ISD and this was supposed to be um, their greatest semester uh, of their educational career. And yet, um, here we are in a very tough situation now um, for our seniors. And uh, I've asked Mr. Colshan tonight to join us. Mr. Colshan is our, uh, like I said, our assistant superintendent for secondary education. He's in charge of all the high schools, 20 years as a high school principal. Um, he's lived and enjoyed all these events as a high school principal. And, and I know you know how important they are. So. Um, maybe we can just go through and have conversation tonight sure. about these events. And, I, and I'll just once again remind everybody, anything can change. OK, what we're trying to give you is the most current and up to date information that we have. But anything could change um, throughout this process. But let's start with, I think, the biggest thing that everybody's worried about is graduation. Sure. Absolutely. And I want to uh, during the last week, week and a half, had, I've had a lot of opportunities to speak to the high school principals. And the comforting thing is that to a person, each one of them has said, if there's a class that can handle this adversity, it's the class of 2020. So you, you should be congratulated for your uh, stick it with this and, and we will get through this. Uh, obviously, graduation is the culmination of all your years of hard work. Uh, we have been in contact with both the Pavilion and with Sam Houston State University, and we are still on track at this time uh, on our graduation schedule. now. Both of them are very willing to host our ceremonies, assuming there are no restrictions at the time that our ceremonies take place. With the high school principals, we've started conversations about what if, what if we're not back in school? What if there are still restrictions that limit us to uh, crowd sizes? Uh, each one of us, and we have a conference call again Friday to start talking more about what happens if, do, do we move graduations to the summer? I know a lot of the universities uh, have postponed their graduations and moved them to a midsummer date just in case. Uh, we're still on track for our scheduled dates, but we are working with both the Pavilion and Sam Houston State to make sure that we have opportunities and options if indeed those original dates don't work out. And we did, like, like Mr. Colson said, we had those conversations today, actually, um, followed up with the Pavilion to look at potential later summer dates if we had to use them. Um, when you talk about maybe changes to smaller crowds, what could that look like if we had to do well, size sure. redu reduction? In, in a class of 1,000, uh, we may divide the graduating class up into groups of 200 and then potentially limit the number of tickets uh, for each graduate. Obviously, it's important that we get as many people into the ceremonies we, we can because of the importance uh, of these ceremonies. But if we have to meet those guidelines, breaking up the, the student body into class, uh, smaller sizes and then limiting ticket opportunities. Obviously, we already live stream our, our graduation ceremonies, but that would be an opportunity for those who may not be able to get a ticket to get into graduation to see the ceremony all, all the same. And, and just to be 100% clear, our number one option right now, option number one, is to have graduations on the date that they've been scheduled and have a normal graduation. That is our first choice. That is still the number one choice on the table. Uh, but it would be irresponsible of us not to be considering all the, the potential changes and, and potential options in case we are forced to, to have those conversations. So um, 
we, we're not sharing these options with you tonight to scare you, to make you think that graduation is not going to occur. Um, but we do want you to have confidence to know that we're working on options. So uh, we understand how important a graduation is. And uh, rather than just cancel, we're going to try everything we can to make sure that there's a way to recognize the achievements of those seniors. And I know another big event that comes sooner is prom. prom. And yeah. that is probably a little bit more concern at this point because, again, we don't know exactly when we'll be able to return to school. We're anticipating April 13th. If we're back in school on, on April 13th and the county has list, lifted restrictions on uh, the size ga sizes of gatherings, we should be, we should be fine. Our, our first scheduled prom is April 24th, and then they continue through May 8th. Uh, we have, again, been in contact with both the Marriott and Lone Star Convention Center. And as long as they are in, in still up and running and we can meet the size restrictions, they are anxious to host our events. And again, we're working with campuses and in constant contact with uh, Dr. Knoll talks to the county uh, daily. And we'll, we've been in contact again with the Marriott and Lone Star. And our goal is to make this happen just like it would if we were still in school at this time. So. Uh, our, our hope is that we can pull this off just like we had planned when the school year started. Great. Yeah, it's important, but it, that's going to be a challenge. I think the, the proms honestly are, are going to be a challenge. I don't know uh, exactly what the size restrictions will be at that point. Um, hopefully we are completely through this at that point as a community, but I don't know if, that, if that'll be the case or not. Proms, unlike graduation, rescheduling a prom is really not uh, an option because of the venues. Yeah. Is that well, accurate? Yes. I mean, uh, schools get locked into weekends year after year and other high schools have proms at both of these locations and to just arbitrarily pick another date uh, in a normal year would be hard. Now with everybody having to reschedule, uh, I would assume that the hotel would have a plan that uh, the first prom that was on the schedule would have the first opportunity to reschedule and then so far, so on down the line. Uh, again, that's a whole lot of proms to put into an even smaller time period and try to do it before graduation. Yeah. Now, there's been a lot of news come out. Um, I've seen it come through the college board about yes. AP testing, very different than very what different. we've done in the past. Um, you want to share some of those highlights with us? Yeah. The, the college board has reconsidered their stance in, uh, kind of redesigned testing for the spring. Uh, they are, have changed the testing window and we won't know exactly what the timeline is on that until April 3rd. Uh, but they have gone to a 45 minute online free response uh, type essay question for each one of those courses. Each course will have two options for the test. Uh, again, they are online. Um, they have review sessions available that started today. If you go to the parent resources uh, section on our website and go down to high school and then AP uh, dual credit, there is a schedule in there that tells when those courses are offered. They'll be on YouTube and, and they're, they're developed by high school AP teachers uh, that will be responsive to the potential questions that could be on the AP exam. Uh, they're only considering the first 75% of the course, so anything that would have been covered uh, from the, uh, during the time we've been out will not be on the AP exam. Um, we had our AP uh, workshop scheduled for our students the weekend we came back, but because of the change in the style of test and the, the potential questions, we've canceled that and are going to rely upon the information College Board is putting out in their tutorials. So we're excited about that, that the, uh, the college board has seen a need to uh, adjust to the climate and uh, give students a chance. Uh, they surveyed all the students who were in AP classes nationwide, and 90% of the students in classes indicated they wanted to take the test. So that, that's exciting, and, and we're glad they've made some concessions to, make, to allow that to happen. And that's a significant piece. That's that test that gets you that college credit. So we want to have that test. and, and um, I commend the College Board and Mr. Kolsch and I have talked about this. They are not um, always known as an organization that is super flexible. So I am impressed with their um, with their foresight here and that they are being flexible and helping kids. And they've done their homework too. I mean, they have reached out to the colleges and universities um, and the colleges and universities are willing to accept uh, the scores that the College Board issues based upon these 45 minute free responses and to award college credit. So that, that's a very positive thing. 
Yes. So I know that we've we completed that third nine weeks before we uh, went into spring break. So that that's a significant nine weeks for seniors specifically. Absolutely. You want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah. Um, final class rank is based upon grades earned through the uh, third three weeks of a student's senior year. So when you went to spring break on March 6th, uh, teachers finalized their grades. We uploaded them this Monday, uh, March 23rd. Um, Report cards will be available for parents through student access. On Friday, we will turn parent access on and you can review report cards. Um, and then we will finalize class ranks. Uh, students have a week to make up incompletes. Uh, don't worry if you have an incomplete, the teacher and your counselor should be in contact with you and give you an opportunity to make that up uh, so we can finalize grades. And the third nine weeks grades, the cumulative grades after that are what we use for valedictorian, salutatorian, and honor graduate status. Okay. Any Anything else, Mr. Colson, that you would add for high school students that they need to know um, right um, now? If you're a senior and you're still in the uh, process of deciding which college and university that you're going to attend, uh, most of those college admissions offices on campuses are closed, but their representatives are working. You can reach out to them via the telephone, email. Uh, if you're having trouble getting a hold of them, your, your college and career counselors on your individual campuses are working, are responsive to phone calls and email, reach out to them. Uh, scholarships, many of the local scholarship uh, uh, groups that award scholarships to our high school seniors have re, uh, restructured their timelines and some of the requirements. Uh, knowing that many of them had a, a letter of recommendation requirement associated with it, it's hard to get letters of recommendation when you're not in school. So many of them have foregone the recommendation requirement and have adjusted their timeline. So there are still scholarships available out there. Um, apply for them. Uh, many years, table uh, scholarships get left on the table that people don't apply for. So uh, apply for scholarships. Make sure you fill out your FAFSA information so that uh, you can work with the college and university on any additional information they may require uh, going forward as you move into the next phase of your life. All right. Um, I think we did we cover everything there. For the, for the most part, just want to remind you, uh, as Mr. Colson said, college and career counselors are on campus. All counselors, uh, if, if they're not necessarily on campus, they are working. So they may be working remotely. So once again, email, phone calls will get you access to those great people um, that can help you with so many things. Uh, and whatever your needs may be, please utilize uh, those folks. They can help you. Um, you may have college needs that we're working on and you're talking about seniors, or you may be a parent of an elementary student who is just having issues uh, printing the homework. You, you maybe you don't have a printer at home and you need you need something printed. We'd be happy to print that for you and and allow you to pick it up or deliver it if we needed to. So you just need to communicate that to the counselors. That's why they're there and they're there to help you. Um, I'm gonna jump into a few questions if we can. And, and thank you, Mr. Colson. I hope that, um, that, was there anything else you want to add there? Yeah. Oh um, yeah, SAT. A, a lot of students, uh, in not just seniors, but a lot of juniors take the SAT for the first time during the spring of their junior year. Both the ACT and the SAT have canceled all tests through the end of the year, but they feel very confident that they will be able to test in June. Both of them offer a, a Saturday in June for SAT and ACT. Uh, and you can uh, sign up through that through the College and Career Center. If you have transcripts that you need sent to colleges and universities in the admissions process, uh, you can do that through Naviance or contact the College and Career Center. Okay, thank you. Um, I want to remind everybody that we know uh, how important school is. We, we know that going to school is important every day, but we have to make these choices about closing school when health is, is the most important thing. It's the same thing when we talk about prom, we talk about Absolutely. graduation. We know how important they are. And if you're a senior sitting out there right now or the parent of a senior, we know how important those things are to you. Uh, but but I assure you that we're gonna make the decisions based on what's best for the health of our community and, and our students and our employees. So um, while we understand how important those are, don't, don't mistake that for um, the fact that we will make decisions that are not in the best interest of health and safety because that always is the number one consideration when, when we look at any events that we do within the school district. Um, a few questions that, that have come through. Uh, one is, uh, 
Are we still set to go back to school on April 13th? Yes, that is still the current plan. Um, we had pledged that we would reevaluate that by April 6th. If we were going to need to extend that, that has not changed. Uh, was in a conference call this morning with all the superintendents in the Houston area. Um, everyone is still making that same pledge that April 6th would be our date. If something changes um, and, and we have new information, we'll bring it to you as quickly as we can. Um, as you know, the governor has closed down schools um, through April 3rd, but for us, we are closed through April 10th. Uh, he could extend the amount of time all Texas schools are closed, and that would certainly affect us if he extended beyond the date that we have already set. Um, let's see. How do we volunteer? Well, thank you for wanting to volunteer, first of all. We certainly appreciate that. Um, right now, we are very covered uh, in our handing out food operations on our campuses. We're working hard to social distance even in that operation. And so having too many volunteers actually becomes a problem because we, we get too close to each other. So we are um, right now we have all the volunteers we need. If you are interested in volunteering, you could email um, the principal of a distribution site and let them know that you're interested in doing that. If they have a need, they'll, they'll reach back out to you. Uh, but you may not hear from them, and that's because we have great teams of counselors and assistant principals and teachers that have been uh, going to the campuses and help distribute those meals each and every day. Um, how will we know about advancing to the next grade? That's a great question, and, and grades in general is a great question. We are um, really waiting on guidance from TEA right now about grades. Uh, for the most part, I think if we did not get back to school. You could just assume that the third nine weeks was the end of the school year. Well, what would your standing be as far as advancing to the next grade based on the end of the third nine weeks? Um, I think that's the simplest way to look at it today. So if you were a four, you had a fourth grade student that has been successful in fourth grade and have been passing all their courses and has done very well, that assumption would be that they would be a fifth grader next year. If you have a, a student that may have been struggling or um, you know, there's a question about their success, then those are conversations you'll have directly with the administration and the counselors on your campus. It'll be one-on-one -on -one conversations, just as they would be at the end of any regular school year. So that, that really won't be different. Uh, we just don't know when that's going to happen. Um, kindergarten graduation, uh, it's a great event. It's lovely, um, but it's not the same as senior high graduation. Uh, so we will have to evaluate kindergarten graduation as we move forward. Um, certainly, if we are able to get back into school, um, it is very likely that we will be in a situation where we will have limited visitors on campuses um, throughout the rest of the year. We would not want to bring in any more um, germs into the building than we would have with just the students and the employees that were there. So I'm not sure about the status of kindergarten graduation at this point. Um, like I said, it's, it's a wonderful event, but it, it would not be the priority that senior high graduation would be at the end of the year. Um, okay, I don't think we have any other questions. I see the hand sanitizer got another shout out. We do have two bottles tonight so that we each have our own. Um, thank you for the hand sanitizer shout out. Um, all right, we are going to wrap up. One of, we have one more exciting thing that we're going to unveil tonight. Um, Many of us in the administration building and throughout the district have, have taken the opportunity to read books on video, and we'll be posting those on our Facebook page, and you can access those whenever you would like. Um, I was lucky enough to, be the, to get to be the first one that will be unveiled tonight. So immediately following this broadcast, and if you're watching this on tape later, uh, the, the, it'll already be posted on our Facebook page, but I'm gonna be reading Be Happy by Monica Sheehan, and uh, it's a great little book. It makes you feel good. It makes me feel good. It's just a good reminder during this time uh, to focus on our on what makes us happy and don't always just focus on the bad things in life, but also focus on the good. So I hope that uh, at the conclusion of this video, you'll seek that out and you'll watch it. And, and I'll give you just a, a little sneak preview. Uh, I read the book on my video and that's the first half of the video, but the real stars are in the second half of the video. So um, if you can make it through my part of reading the video of, of reading the book on video, hang in there because the second half of the video is wonderful. So thank you all very much for being here tonight. I hope you and your family are well. Uh, we'll look forward to being back next week. We'll, we'll send out a message about the date. It uh, depends on how news is breaking. Uh, if we have a lot of news early in the week, we'll come back earlier in the week. If not, we'll push to later in the week next week. 
But we appreciate you joining us. Please be safe. Stay home. Keep your social distance. And let's all get through this together. Thank you very much.